Hi everybody, this is Julian from Hugging Face. I guess we all have our own idea of what a perfect development environment would be for Jupyter Notebooks, and there are plenty of options. Uh, for me, I guess the dream scenario is a combination of managed infrastructure from you know small instances to really big multi-GPU instances, uh, the ability to use a modern IDE with code completion, and as of a few days ago, I'm afraid I can't live with uh, GitHub Copilot any longer. So I'm going to show you how to use all those things, uh, combine a SageMaker notebook instance with VS Code instead of the built-in uh, Jupyter environment, and we'd also uh, throw in GitHub Copilot for good measure. Okay, it's not a complicated setup, we can automate a lot of it, so let's take a look. As you probably know, SageMaker comes with two types of Jupyter environments, Notebook Instances and SageMaker Studio. Notebook Instances are pretty much what the name says. It's an EC2 instance, completely managed, that comes pre-installed with a Jupyter environment and Conda kernels, and uh, when you open it, you jump straight into uh, a vanilla Jupyter environment. So that should look very, very familiar. And SageMaker Studio is a more ambitious, full-fledged IDE, still based on JupyterLab, with lots of integrations for additional SageMaker features like uh, SageMaker Pipeline and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So Obviously, if you're deep into the SageMaker SDK and you actually use uh, SageMaker pipelines and SageMaker data wrangler and SageMaker debugger and all those things, um, then probably SageMaker Studio makes more sense. If you're looking for uh, a, a simpler, um, non-SageMaker specific dev environment, you just want basically, you know, I don't know, a GPU instance and Jupyter running on it. Uh, then uh, a notebook instance is what you should use. And uh, I'll go for notebook instances. Uh, I think they just make more sense to me. Uh, I'm not using all the SageMaker bells and whistles. And uh, and they tend to be more, uh, more reliable as well. So that's what we're going to use. So the first step here is to go and create a notebook instance. So just a few clicks. That should be fast. Let me show you. Creating a notebook instance is very easy. So let me quickly show you. We're not going to create it because there's an automation step uh, we need to take care of first. But let me quickly walk you through the steps. So from the SageMaker console, uh, you go to Notebook Instances, click on Create, of course, give it a name, pick an instance type, and you, know, you could go from really small to really big. <laughs> OK. Uh, so it doesn't matter for now because we're not going to create it. So let's take this one. Um, you need to create some, perm some permissions. So if you have a, an IAM role you want to use, feel free to use that. If you don't have one, you can create one right away. That's very simple. And then that's about it. We could go and click Notebook Instance, wait for a few minutes, and then we would have this, uh, this instance ready to open and work with. But we'll need to install some additional stuff. So for example, I want to install Git LFS, right? Because for Hugging Face repositories, um, we need Git LFS support. Models are big files. That's how the, the Hugging Face Hub manages them. So I need to do that. And I don't want to do it manually every time I, I open the instance. So I want to automate that stuff. And we want to install a code server to get VS Code support as well. And just the same, you know, we don't want to do that stuff manually. We want a simple way to automate that stuff away every time we uh, create a new instance. And so to do this, we can use a feature called Lifecycle Configurations. And Lifecycle Configurations are still available here. You can see them here. And they let you create uh, basically uh, two scripts, one that runs once you create the instance. So it will just run that one time. Um, and you can create another script that runs every time the instance is started because, as you probably know, you can start and stop those instances to avoid unnecessary charges. Okay, so we have a creation script and we have a start script. So these are good places to inject our own scripts and, and commands to automate everything that we want. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. So we're going to create a lifecycle configuration. And once we've done that, we're going to create the instance. Okay. Let's do it. 
Okay, so let's create the lifecycle configuration. We start from here. We select Notebook Instance. Click on Create. And uh, let's call it uh, Code Server Demo. And now we can just basically paste our two scripts in the Start and the Create sections. So let me show you the scripts before we do that. So the create script uh, is this one. Okay, so first we install, uh, we download and install Git LFS. Okay, then I want to click, then I want to clone my repository for demos. That's convenient. Okay, just like that. And uh, set up the credential helper so that I don't have to re authenticate to a Git every time I push. And then I can install the VS Code server stuff and run the, the installation scripts. Okay. Um, this actually comes, you know, give credit where credit is due. This comes from a really nice blog post on the machine learning blog from AWS by Sofian, Eric, and Giuseppe. So good job, guys. And uh, they walk you through the setup for um, Code Server on uh, Notebook Instances and um, Studio. OK, so that's a really good post to read. Right, so that's where I got those commands from. And um, and they show you, um, they show you, a, uh, they show, and they show it a little bit differently here. They actually use the uh, AWS CLI to create the lifecycle, et cetera, et cetera. So um, they don't go through the, the UI stuff like I do. Okay, but lots of good information here. And uh, first of all, of course, you should read that blog post and, uh, and then do the config like I did. Okay, so let's go back to this um, and we can apply, let's just copy paste that stuff. I oh, forgot one line. Okay, here we go. Let's just paste this into the create section. Okay, and then we'll do the start section. And the start section is obviously a little simpler. Um, I'm still reinstalling uh, Git LFS because this is actually not stored on the persistent volume. So notebook instances have different file systems. Uh, your um, SageMaker directory where you put your notebooks and, and stuff, and of course this is persisted. And uh, kind of the, the, let's say the root volume is not. So, um, so you need to redo this. Again, set the credential helper. And this time I don't need to install um, VS Code because that's actually done in my directory, as you can see here. And I just need to enable it. Okay, so pretty simple. So let's just paste this stuff here. Okay, and now we can create the configuration. Now let's create the notebook instance. Okay, click on this, give it a name, pick an instance type. So I'm not going to run any actual notebooks here. So I guess, you know, I can go T3 to Excel. Yeah, that should be fine. I need to select my lifecycle config. Uh, five gigs is not a lot of storage, so uh, I don't know. You know, I, I always end up bumping that stuff up. Um, so code server is not is not big, but okay, yeah, just to be on the safe side. Let's add a little more storage. Uh, the IAM role, as mentioned before, if you already have one, fine. If not, you can create it, and then we're good to go. We can click on create. Okay. My instance is still starting up, and now I see logs. Right, so we have a uh, separate log for the lifecycle config on create uh, and then of course we'll have one for lifecycle config on start and this is super useful to uh, to debug things when your scripts don't really go <laughs> the way you wanted them to go right so yeah we see the installation we see git lfs uh, we see my repo has been cloned and then it fetched a code server extension and uh, and now it's uh, it's installing all those things OK, so uh, there's a bit of Conda stuff involved, so it takes a minute or two. It's OK, so let me pause again. And um, and when I'll come back, the instance will be ready and we'll open it. So the instance is up and uh, let's uh, yeah, let's open it. OK, so 
We'll jump straight into Jupiter. All right, let's zoom in a bit. We can see our downloads, the code server stuff, and of course my repo. Okay, so sure, you know, we could go and uh, and open um, a notebook, but what we really want to do, of course, is to open code server. So. Let's see what happens now. Yes, this does look like VS Code. Uh, choose the look that I want. Well, dark, and it's Halloween, by the way. Happy Halloween. So, where's the flame and skulls and death theme? Ah, hmm? uh, yeah, and the rest. I'll mark is done. Okay, and there we are. So, uh, yeah, in case you're not convinced, we are in the browser. Okay. This is not local VS Code. So now I could go maybe and uh, do the usual stuff just to prove my point. Yeah, EC2 user, SageMaker. Okay, and remember this is where you want to keep your uh, your files, right? Yeah, I guess I trust the authors. All right, so let's quickly create uh, a notebook just to see that everything works. New file, Jupyter. Untitled one, yeah, why not? Um, and we'll go and uh, pip install transformers. Yeah, and you can see it created uh, an environment automatically for me, but of course, it will also auto detect the existing um, the existing environments on the instance. So that's pretty cool. Let's try and run this. So yeah, this is the one I wanted to show you. It needs IPy kernel in that environment. So maybe that's something that could be added to the um, to the code server script. So blog authors, my friends, if you're watching this, uh, you know I'd love your advice. Uh, maybe we can uh, solve that problem. But anyway, so this is an easy one to fix. We can just copy this, open a terminal, and we can add. Yes, so that it will automatically install. Okay, takes a minute. I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so IPy kernel has been installed, and we can close this terminal, and now we should be able to run this. Okay, well that's the only gotcha, I guess. Um, that conda, that extra conda package you need to install, um, and then things work. Okay. So now it's installing transformers, and uh, yep, we're good to go. So the next step is to install Copilot. And you're thinking, ha, that's super easy. I can go to the marketplace, right? And I can just go and say, give me GitHub Copilot. And it's not there. So I'm guessing there's some kind of restriction. You know, who knows why? So we can't do it like that. Okay. So what can we do? Well, we can still install Copilot. Uh, what we're going to do is go to the GitHub Copilot uh, extension page. We're going to download the file and we're going to install it. Very simple. Okay, let me open that page and I'll show you how. If we look at the installation instructions for GitHub Copilot on VS Code, um, you know, I guess the first thing we need to do is go to the extension page. And if we were running local VS Code, we'd just click on install and it takes care of that. But we can also download the extension and we're going to do this, right? And it's actually a very tiny file. Now we're going to go back to our uh, notebook instance and we're going to upload this file. Okay, yeah, that's the one. Okay. And now we can install it in a terminal. So we can go back. Installing the extension is simple. Uh, just open terminal. And in this directory here, we have our code server binary. Okay, and it should be in the path. If not, that's where it lives. And if we just do this, install extension, 
which is what we would also do locally with the code binary. It should all work. Let's see. There you go. Isn't that wonderful? Pops up immediately. So yes, I need to sign to GitHub. All right, so after logging into GitHub and clicking a few times, I can see Copilot is enabled, right? So now, how about, let's get rid of this terminal. How about we ask for install datasets? Yes. Amazing. So once we're done working, we can just save the file. Yep. OK. Close this window. And we can close this as well. OK. And you know, to avoid unnecessary charges, we want to stop the notebook instance. OK. I started the instance again. So you can see it's in service. And uh, we can see the lifecycle config on start log is available if you need to debug that. So let's just open this thing. And we should be able to go back to code server. It should be enabled. So there you go. Um, what is pretty close to my dream IDE, managed infrastructure, a proper IDE, code completion, Git management, all the good stuff and GitHub Copilot to save me time. And it's all hosted in the cloud. And you can start and stop and start and stop. So there you go. Um, this is pretty close to my dream IDE with a wide range of managed infrastructure from small CPU to large GPU instances and a proper IDE with code completion and Git management and, uh, uh, and all the good stuff that comes with that. And of course, uh, GitHub Copilot. So, uh, I can't think of a better way to write uh, Python code and work with notebooks right now. Okay, well, until I see you next time, happy Halloween, be safe, keep rocking.